In this video, we're going to talk about the dot plot when using categorical or quantitative data. Now let's talk about properties for dot plots. I'm going to give you the top three. One, dot plots can be used for categorical or quantitative data. Two, dot plots are used for small quantitative data sets. Small is relative, um, but sometimes instead of using a dot plot for small quantitative data sets, you might want to use the histogram. And I got a great video for you on how to create a histogram. And three, dot plots are used instead of bar graphs because dot plots are less cluttered. And we'll talk a little bit about that on our third example. Okay, so I'm going to draw a dot plot for the following outside temperatures. Just to let you know that temperature is considered a quantitative variable. Okay, so the, to draw a dot plot, I need to know my minimum and maximum value. Can you find that? That's right, 88 and 102. Okay, so now that we know our min and our max value, we need to draw a number line. So let me draw a number line, starting with 88 and going all the way to 102. Now we're ready to put the dots right above the number line. So what's my first data point? 88. So I'm going to put a dot right above 88. And I'm going to cross 88 out. 90 is the next dot I'm going to draw. Then 91. Then 93. Then 92. Now I see 91 one more time. What do I do with that dot? Just put it above the first dot. So there it is. 89, I'm going to squeeze in there. 88, what do I do again? Just put it on the top of the first 88. And you notice that I'm crossing out all the ones that I already put a dots for. It'll be easier for me to know where I'm going. 92, one more time, put it above the first 92. 91, put another dot. 93 and so forth, all the way to 102. One of the advantages of having a dot plot is that you can visually see your data. And you can see that 102 seems to be a bit far from most of the data on the left. Let's do another example. Draw a dot plot for the following exit exam scores. This time, the information, the data set, is in a tabular form. It's in a uh, frequency uh, table. Here you can see that uh, a score of 40, we have three scores of 40. We have, for example, seven scores of 44. So we need to draw a number line that's going to be easy. The scores are in order. So minimum value is 40, maximum value is 54. We draw a number line that way. And the next thing we want to do is we want to uh, draw the dots. So how many scores of 40 do we have? Yes, three of them. So we have three dots. And we have six um, scores of 42. And there we go. We draw six dots. Seven dots of 44. Two dots of 46. Four dots of 50. and six dots of 54. So again, if we just look at the dot plot, we can ask ourselves, which is the top three highest values? Well, 42, 44, and 54, which is the most um, exit exam score. By glancing at this, probably 44. In the next example, we're going to draw a dot plot from the following table. So we have a variable eye color, which is a categorical variable, different from the other two problems, which were quantitative variables. OK, so we have some observations. We have three blue eyes, four brown eyes, and seven green eyes. So to start drawing the dot plot, I need a y-axis, different from the quantitative variable dot plots, the other two problems that we did. So we need a y-axis. I'm going to label it eye color. I have blue, brown, and green. And then I need a number line. 
right, for my x-axis. That hasn't changed. What's my minimum value? That's right, three. And what's my maximum value? That's right, seven. So for our number line, I'm not gonna start at three. I'm gonna start at one. And then my maximum value, I'm gonna end up at seven. I'm gonna spread it out a little bit, not necessary, but you know, I have that flexibility. I label my x-axis, I have it as count. Okay, so now let's um, plot our dot. For blue, it's three. Now, previously, you would put the dot right above the number line. But in this case, we need to, uh, first of all, uh, look at what our count is. It's three. But we don't put the dot right above the number line because that would represent green. So what we need to do is we need to put the dot in this area here because it, it represents the blue, okay? So that's where I put the dot right there. Next one says brown is four. So we look at four, right, in our count. We can't put the dot here because that represents green. But if we go up a little bit, this row represents brown. So let's do that. Let's put the dot right there for brown. And then for green um, being seven, let's look for seven on our number line. And then we put the dot right here. Sometimes people use um, categorical data, right? Categorical variable in a dot plot instead of a uh, bar graph because it just looks less cluttered. Okay, let's try the next problem. Next problem says, create a dot plot for the following store data. Okay, so you have these stores and you collect data in millions of dollars. You collect profits, profit information, and you also have revenues which you also collect information. Now, in this particular problem, we have a mixture of categorical variables and quantitative variables. And you can see that, for example, store two, which is a categorical variable, corresponds to profit, in this case, $3 million of profit, and also corresponds to $12 million in revenue for a store number two. So these values are stuck to each other. Okay. Uh, they come as a set. Sometimes when you draw the dot plot, you want to have one quantitative variable to be from high to low to sort it. And that's because sometimes the graph will have a unique pattern to it, uh, something that can be more easy to the eye. Not necessary, but I am going to do it in this case. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take revenue and I'm going to sort this column. Okay, so I'm going to erase this and rearrange the data. The little red arrow just says I'm going to sort it from largest to smallest. So here store three has profit six million and 14 million revenue and then the rest of the data here until store five, which is $2 million of profit, $9 million in revenue. Okay, so how am I going to do this in drawing the dot plot? First, I'm going to need a Y axis, in this case, the store numbers. So I'm going to write down the store numbers, right? Um, store number three, you notice that these stores, the store numbers are not in order, right? They're based on the order of the revenue because the revenue goes from high to low, which we did previously. And the next thing we want to do is the x-axis. Where do we start? Which is our lowest quantitative value? And that's right, it looks like it's two. And the largest, that's right, 14. So what we'll do is we'll do a number line. I'm going to start at one and go all the way to 15, just to make it look balanced, okay? And I also label it as millions of dollars. 
Okay, now let's do one other thing. Let's do a, a legend. Um, I need to identify the profits um, quantitative variable. I'll, I'll identify them as a red circle and the revenue I'm going to identify them as an orange square. This way I can tell the difference between the two quantitative variables. Okay, so here we go. For store three, six million dollar profit. I go where six is on the number line. I'm gonna go all the way up to store three. There it is. So I put a circle, a red circle. Uh, store number two has three million dollars of profit. I put a circle where three million dollars is. And then I do the rest. Now, let's look at revenue. Store number three has $14 million of revenue. Let's look at the number line. Let's go to 14. It's right there. And then we go up to store three. What do we get? We put a square at store three, $14 million. Then store two has $12 million. So we put a square there. And then the rest of the squares. And here you can see um, a nice pattern emerging. Uh, you can see that uh, store number three seems to be in the lead in both profits and revenue. You can see that there's a pattern here of the revenues seem to be going down while the pattern over here for the profits seem to be also going down as well. Again, you could do, you could do this uh, via um, some type of bar graph but in in doing this uh, it's less cluttered and you can sometimes see um, the pattern more clearly